Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be learning about Firebase. We're going to be building a to-do app with Google authentication, real-time updates with Firestore and cloud functions. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So Firebase is essentially a one-stop shop for building applications. So it has a suite of products that are going to help you build your applications, such as authentication, databases, functions, um, etc. And then it's going to take you right up from there to hosting your application, releasing it, monitoring it, and then engaging with the users, A-B testing, remote config. In this tutorial, we're mainly going to be covering the build side of it, so authentication, Firestore, and functions. But if you want to see any more on the other sides, let me know in the comments below. So let's build our application. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Firebase console and we're going to make a new project. So I'm going to speed this bit up a bit. So all we're doing here is creating a new project. I'm going to disable Google Analytics here. Once the dashboard is ready, I head over to authentication and I just enable Google authentication here. That's the only provider we're going to be using. Next up, I go to Firestore. I hit get started and I select start in production mode. This just affects the Firestore rules, but we're going to be overriding them later on anyways. The final step is moving on to functions. So the functions tab will give you some instructions on how to use them. We're going to go over that in the video later on anyways, so that's fine. The final step here is go over to project settings and create a web app. This web app is going to give us some configuration and we can basically take that configuration, copy and paste it into our actual application code. So now that we've got the project set up, let's dive into the code. So I have a brand new create react app here. All I've done is add some styling and I've updated the app.js. So I've got a bit of this skeleton of the application, but none of, it, none of it actually works yet. So we're going to basically add Firebase to get this all working. The app component here has a hard coded user. So if there is no user, it's going to return this sign in component right now, which is just a, a button, which we obviously need to, um, we need to fill out. Otherwise it's going to show the to do's and in the to do's component, all it is, is so sign, again, a sign up button that does nothing a form that does nothing. So we need to fill these out and actually persist, persist the to do's. And then we're going to actually list each to do item and the to do's, you can click them and that will complete it. So that will mark it as complete and you can delete the to do, which again, all isn't implemented. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is install Firebase. Um, so we can do an npm install Firebase. So I've already done that. So I'm not going to rerun it here. And I've also installed React Firebase hooks. This is basically just a bunch of hooks that you can use with Firebase, just makes it slightly easier to, to use Firebase. Um, also, we're gonna install as a dev dependency Firebase tools. So we're gonna set up the Firebase tools so that we can track our rules and our functions all locally, and then we can deploy them. So once you've set them up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do npx Firebase init. And what this is going to do, like I said, it's going to initialize your project for Firebase and you can choose what you want to control in basically in your repository. So in our case, we want to deploy our Firebase Firestore rules and we're going to host some functions. You can see that you can do other things, but we're just going to keep it like that for now. And then you're going to tie it to our project. So we've already created our project. So I'm going to say use existing project here. And then I'm going to select the Firebase tutorial and I'm going to keep the defaults for the, all the locations. So I'm going to select um, JavaScript here. I'd, I'd recommend using uh, ESLint, but for this project, I'm just going to say no, and I'm going to tell it to install the dependencies. So it'll fetch all that for me. Cool. So that's that. Now you'll see a few additional files in your repository. So mainly this functions directory, which you can add functions. So we'll get onto that later on. And then we have these Firebase files here on the, the top level. So we're not really going to use any indexes. Um, the Firebase JSON basically just tells it about where to find the files. And then we have Firestore rules, which is basically the security for your database. Uh, and this is all accessible from the console. And we'll see that in a moment. So next up, we need to initialize the Firebase so we can use it within our app. So I'm going to create a Firebase.JavaScript file here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import Firebase and then we're going to make sure any product that we're using is also imported. So that's Firestore auth functions. We're next going to initialize the app and we're just going to copy and paste our configuration that we got earlier on from the project settings. And next up, just for convenience, I'm going to export some variables to help um, later on in the app. And then I'm just going to export by default Firebase again so we can use it later on. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do authentication. And this is pretty simple. We're going to go over to our app component and we're going to remove this hard coded test and we're just going to use the use auth state from the Firebase hooks. 
And inside here, we're just going to pass in the auth that we just exported from our Firebase config. And what this does is this actually returns an array. So we have user. We also have loading and error states if you want to use that. Um, in this case, I'm just going to keep it simple. So if you're not authenticated, the user is going to be undefined, in which case it will hopefully redirect you to the sign in like it is now. Otherwise, it's going to show you the to do's page. And for actually signing in, all we need to do is again reference auth, and then we just want to do sign in with pop up. And then we're going to specify basically the, the provider. So firebase.auth. Let's just import this guy dot Google provider. And actually, I need to specify new instance of this. So new firebase.auth.google provider. And that should be it. So simple as that. If I hit now the Google sign in, it's going to show me the Google sign in option. So I'm just going to take that off here to the side. I'm going to click my Google account. And there we go. It signed me in. Simple as that. And for signing out, so we'll just go over to our to do's page. Let me shrink this and the sign out function here. In order to sign out, all we need to do is auth. Again, I'll import that dot sign out. There we go. So now if I sign out, it's going to take me back. And if I sign in with Google, it's obviously going to bring in the Google account. So let's start with adding some data. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a reference to our uh, to do's collection. So that's just going to look like this. So we're accessing firestore.collection function. And within there, we're just basically passing a path to where we want to store uh, the to do's. So in my case, I'm just going to have it under a user's collection, then a user's ID. So the, the ID for each user, they get given a unique ID um, within Firebase and then slash to do's. And this user ID is also going to be used to authenticate basically. So when we update our Firestore rules, we're going to say, you know, the user that's trying to create these to do's can only create them within their own um, document. So once we've done that, we're going to go over to our on submit to do, and we're just going to reference, or we're going to call out to our to do's reference, and we're just going to call the add function here. And all you do here is you basically pass in the document that you want to add. So in our case, we want to pass in um, text, which is just going to be the to do. I'm going to do complete, which is just going to be false by default, and then created at, which um, is going to basically just have a timestamp. And we can access the timestamp um, by some helper functions from Firebase here. So Firebase, Firestore, field value, server, timestamp. So that's just going to create one for us. And that should be it. Um, so we'll come back to this in a second. So let's add some code to actually view our to do so we can actually see everything. So instead of hard coding this to do's here as an array, what we're going to do is we're going to call out to a hook. So the hook we're going to call out to is use collection data. And this basically subscribes to a collection or a query, and then it'll basically update um, anytime that changes. So that returns uh, an array. So we're going to destructure that. And in here, we're basically going to pass in our query or our reference to basically the, the, the collection. So in this case, I'm just going to pass in the to do's ref. So at this point, if we try to add a to do, I'm just going to open up the console, we're going to see an error with permissions. So let's update the Firestore rules. So you can go directly into the console to update these rules. So it's just under Firestore rules. But what we're going to do is we're going to update it in our repository and we're going to deploy it. So I'm going to go over to uh, our Firestore rules right here. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to add a new rule here. So I'm going to leave the first one in, which basically um, allows or stops any kind of standard read and write. But I'm going to add an explicit rule to say um, you basically match a specific path, in our case, users slash user ID and anything within there. And we're going to allow read and write as long as the requester, the ID of the requester, is equal to this parameter here, this UID um, that's in the path. So if they match, that means, well, first of all, this is if this is populated, then that means your user signed in. And obviously, if it's the same, that means you're writing to your own um, your own document collection. So to deploy this, we're going to call out to npx firebase deploy. And we're just going to pass in a flag to say only deploy, I think I've got it here, only deploy the Firestore rules. So now that that's done, I should be able to refresh over here on the right hand side and see our new rules. So let's just click on that. So you can see there that that's all gone in fine. And what we can do is we can drag this here to the left. And let's open the data panel here. And basically, if I add in a to do, so let's just add in a test to do. I think for the first one, it might need a refresh just so it creates the collections. 
there we go. So we've got users, we've got my user ID here, and then we have a list of to-dos. So let's just create a document with an auto ID, and you can see that I have my data here. If I create another one, it should create it in real time. And the really cool thing is, oh, yeah, so I've accidentally hard-coded the to-do there. So I'm just gonna go back into to-dos, and this should reference the actual to-do. Let me try that again. So now if I go in and change this to-do to, you know, something else, the cool thing is it's, it's in real time here, so that's gonna update as that changes. Cool, so next up, let's add the complete and um, delete functionality. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy over this to-dos reference to our to-do component. And I've actually just noticed one thing that we missed earlier on. So with the use collection data here, we've passed in the query, but we also need to specify um, basically the name of the ID field uh, that we want back. So here, I'm gonna do uh, ID field, and we're just gonna call this ID with a string, and that way the, the to do's here is just going to pass in the actual ID field um, with yeah with the name ID. So we're going to go down here. Like I said, we're going to take this to do's ref, and we're just going to go into the on complete to do function, and we're going to click to do's ref dot doc. So the to do's ref is a collection. We want to specify or we want to um, target specific to do. So we're going to do um, document ID. So this is the document within the collection. And then within here, we're just going to hit set. So we're going to set it to an object. In this case, we're going to say the only thing we want to change is complete. So we want to basically toggle that. Um, and as is by default, this will actually override the entire object. We don't want that. We want to basically merge it with the existing uh, object that's there. So we can add um, we can add this merge flag to true. So that means the rest of the data will stay the same. We're only going to change the complete functionality here. And then we'll just quickly do the delete to do because it's pretty similar. So we're going to take the, again, a reference to the document. And then all we do here is hit the delete. Cool. So if I go over here on the right hand side, um, if I click something else, you can see that that flag there is coming from um, the CSS. But if we take over the Firestore here, we can see. I think it's this one, the complete is going true, false, true, false. And if I delete this one here, it should just remove that document. There we go. So at this point, the app works fine. So if I add a to do here, I can kind of complete it, um, uncomplete it, and I can obviously delete it. So the final thing we're going to do is we're just going to add a quick cloud function. So a cloud function is exactly what it sounds. It's a serverless function that you can basically execute any sort of business logic and it kind of hooks into to Firebase and Firestore. Um, it's usually good, yeah, for, for adding logic that you don't want on the client side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a, a simple function that when we try to add um, a to-do that already exists, it's basically gonna prevent us from doing that. So let's have a look at how that works. So I'm gonna head over to the functions directory, which was created earlier on, and I'm gonna go over to index.js. Um, and you can see here, there's already an example of a function. So we're just exporting here a function and this one is calling out the functions from Firebase. And specifically, this one is an HTTP function. And you have all the request and response data you need um, to basically handle, handle an HTTP call. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use something called um, a call function, which is basically, it's exactly the same. It's a HTTP request, but Firebase gives you some out-of-the-box APIs to um, handle fetching uh, and resolving of the request instead of basically having to, to implement your own fetching logic. It's also worth noting that these functions are of course triggered by HTTP calls, but you can also have functions that are triggered by changes in the Firestore database. So a write or an update to the Firestore database will trigger a function and then that function can go ahead and perform some sort of action. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to reach to the Firebase admin, and this is basically gonna give us an instance of the database. Next up, I'm gonna add a add to do function. And again, this is on call instead of on request. Um, they're pretty similar. And what we can do here is we can create a reference similar like we did earlier on to the to do's collection. And using the context, we can take the user ID of the requester. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a, a get snapshot of the existing to-dos, right? So we can do a dot get, which basically gets it all at once instead of um, the, the subscribing like we did earlier on. And then we're gonna go through all the documents and the data here um, contains all the data that we're trying to save. So we're gonna compare that data.txt against each of the um, to-do text. Then if the text doesn't exist, then we're just gonna do to-dos.add data so we're just going to add the data obviously if it does exist then it's just basically going to ignore everything 
So that's all we need to do for this function, hopefully pretty straightforward. And now we need to go back to our to-do and um, slightly update the logic of our add so we can actually call out to the function instead. All we need to do is basically um, define our function. So we're gonna define an add to-do function, which is gonna represent the um, function that we just had. And we're gonna hook into the functions variable that we exported from Firebase earlier on. And here we're gonna call out to HTTPS callable function. And here you pass in the name of the function you just defined. So I think it was called add to do. So this will basically um, fetch an instance of that method of that you know function, and then you can just use this as a standard function NMS in your app, and it will handle all the you know fetching logic, etc. So we're going to take this add to do, and we're just simply going to replace this to do's ref dot add with add to do, um, and it should be as simple as that. So now all we need to do is deploy our function and test it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the terminal here. Um, I'm going to do npx, again, Firebase, uh, deploy, and we're going to specify only functions. So now that we've added that, we can see the function in our functions tab in Firebase. Uh, and you can have a look at the logs, etc. all here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to our app. And basically, if I try to add something else here, it should not let you do that. So I'm just hit add. Yeah, that's prevented me. And of course, you might want to display an error message or something here instead. And if I add another one, that all works fine. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. You know, Firebase has got a lot more things to offer, um, but hopefully this is short enough to, to make sense of a, of a few things and help you get started. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.